Okay, so I figured out why Celestron doesn't want you to use this focus motor with your older Nexstar GPS, and it has to do with the diameter of your focuser. Now, I ordered the Retrofit Kit 2, but that's not going to be here for a couple days, and I'm an impatient fuck. So, after you take off your focus knob, you're going to have this brass ring in here. And the issue is, is the OD of this brass ring will not fit into the ID of the focus motor. So, yours is going to look a little different when you take it off because there's going to be this black screw down in there. All you got to do is run this thing all the way counterclockwise, pull on it. It's real easy to pull. The whole thing will pull out and you'll be able to undo that screw and just keep unthreading your focus knob. Now, I found this piece of bra uh, threaded rod that I have, and I put a nut on one end, and I put a couple nuts on this end. This is overkill. You can probably get away with just doing one or two. Um, so I put a couple nuts on this end, put some on here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck this up in a drill, and this brass is really soft. So with this thing chucked up in a drill, you'll be able to hold on to your bearing here, run this thing at high speed, and hold a piece of sandpaper up against this, and actually take off just enough metal in order for this thing to slide in here. Okay, so we got it checked up in our drill here nice and tight. Better yet, if you're like me and you're lazy, I'm sure sandpaper would have worked. Uh, if you have a coarse enough one, then finish it up with some fine. I couldn't find exactly what I was looking for, so I brought out the world's sketchiest bench grinder. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna keep this thing rotating. I'm gonna hold on to the bearing on the end there. This bearing down here will rotate freely in your hands while this rotates. You'll be able to hold on to this while this rotates and get yourself an even grind. I'm just going to pick the smoother of my two wheels. Yeah, but I'm sure sandpaper would have worked, especially if you had a coarse one. It probably would have just been slower. If you don't think so, fight me. Okay, a couple of things here. So with the bench grinder method, it works perfect. Just do it a little bit at a time. So what I found was really important was I had that threaded rod through here. I had to get it really tight. I had to use a wrench to get it down there really tight so it wouldn't vibrate out. And then as this rotated, I found that if I kind of gave it a little flick by holding it, I ended up not using the drill. Just hold the end of the threaded rod and kind of give it a little flick with your fingers. And this will actually just start rotating, not as fast, but kind of with that, giving you a nice even grind all the way around. Now it's not the prettiest. I could probably clean this up, but I'm probably also never gonna look at this again and I don't really care what the next guy thinks. Also make sure, really important, test your fit all the time between so i would do you know what i felt was kind of a lot of material coming off again brass is really soft so a lot you're gonna move a lot of material really quick so i would just do a little bit take off a little bit check the uh check the fit in the focuser do a little bit check the fit in the focuser also this is gonna send stuff everywhere so don't do it anywhere near anything sensitive i'm out here i'm in the backyard i was just kind of throwing stuff this way you know in the direction of my telescope and my computer and all my really expensive gear just throwing brass dust all over it you know don't do that so again, just go slow, check the fit. It will rotate. It gave me a pretty even grind. I didn't get quite as much as I wanted. You can kind of tell up by the bearing. I was a little nervous about nicking too much into the bearing and creating issues. Um, yeah, I could always just replace this. So I wasn't super worried about it. And I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that that retrofit kit when it shows up will fit. Um, I may just cancel the order though, if this works today. All right, so we put it back on the scope and I put on the included adapter plate that comes with the focus motor. So uh, here we go, let's see. Yep, and now it slides right on. So that was the main reason why they didn't want you to do this on these older scopes is they just had a different thing in there. They had a different bearing, they changed it out totally. Um, that was the main reason why they didn't want you to do this on these older scopes. As you can see, we got it nice and flush in here. You don't have to worry about getting it all the way up to the bearing because of the setback in here. This guy is not going to move. It's not going to come out and go forward. That's the job of the rod on the inside. Um, but yeah, if you can kind of just get this first bit off and it's so close from fitting out of the box. Now, this isn't gonna work with any of the included computer and the hand controller, but I do all of my guiding and I do all of my stuff. I've got a, uh, I got the Hyperstar on here. Um, I got the wedge. I do all of my stuff through Nina. Nina will be able to directly interface with this and handle my focusing for me. So I'm just gonna power it off the 12 volt uh, that comes out of the base down here. I'm not even going to screw around with putting it in the ox. 
Uh, this thing is a fantastic scope and I've absolutely loved it having it for visual astronomy, but I think I'm going to have it as both video and photography. Basically, it's going to be my primary scope. It's just too big to move around anymore, but I love it. So that's why I'm doing all these mods to it. Now, if I wanted to go back, I could always take this, um, probably put like a piece of tape or something around it to get a real nice tight fit, but the, uh, the focus knob does not fit anymore. Uh, also, if I go back, one of the things that I would ever want to do uh, would be put a micro touch on here. I would not ever want to go back to this thing. This, this whole system just kind of sucks if it's not automated. So yeah, it's on there, it's tight against the shaft, and uh, we're going to go ahead and plug it in and get it going, but it's pretty straightforward, you just follow the instructions from there, that one little tiny modification you got to do, just take off a little bit out of the OD, and it'll slip right on, no problem. Okay, so here we are, we're running through the calibration routine right now, I've got it connected via USB. Uh, I'm running the 12 volt power off the base here with just a cheap cord. I got two of these for like five bucks off of Amazon. That was super cool. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna run run the USB into the laptop, and we're in the middle of the calibration right now. We're almost done. It already went to one limit, and I think it's now going back to it just to make sure it's got it. Um, I've already got it connected in Nina as well. Uh, you do have to go to the Celestron site, and I'm sorry I'm not using screen capture here. So on the Celestron page, you'd have to get the ASCOM driver and the focus utility. I did both because the utility runs through the calibration program. I don't know if it's fully necessary, um, but once you get both of those installed, uh, you can use the focus utility. I just did the calibration. It's complete. Everything worked out okay. I didn't hear anything weird or, or noisy or crazy. And I've got it connected in Nina, so it's ready to go.